Hello everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm doing a video response for some really good questions that came up recently in a video of mine and the questions were basically about how we schedule our day and how we go about working with these lesson blocks that we are doing with our homeschool. So the first thing I want to explain is how we how we schedule our main lesson blocks, which I am calling them like unit studies because I feel like that's a little bit more relatable for people. But basically, a main lesson block is a concentration of one particular subject that you will cover over a period of anywhere from three weeks to maybe nine weeks. Now, typically in a Waldorf uh, homeschool, there well, actually just in a, in a general Waldorf school, there will be maybe six or seven lesson blocks in a whole year, but some of them might be like only three weeks and some of them are longer. Now for the ones that are longer, they will recommend that you break them up into smaller portions and then divide them up over the year. There's something really valuable about letting that information rest and almost letting that information get forgotten before it's revisited again. So there's a lot of value in that. What I noticed for myself, however, is that that didn't work so well. Once we got into a unit, and basically this is me <laughs> getting into a unit, I really didn't want to stop. I really was so into it, I wanted to do it till it was over. I didn't want to stop in the middle and then pick it up later. And something else that just really resonated with me was a lecture that I l uh, listened to many years ago called core and love of learning and it's a Thomas Jefferson education lecture by Oliver DeMille and Rachel DeMille and you can check the description box below for a link because it's one it's a lecture that I've talked about before it's one of my favorite homeschool resources and I learned a lot from that lecture and one of the things that I remember Rachel talking about was how they did their their school throughout the year and she said that winters are for reading and winters are like just a perfect opportunity to study history because there's so much reading. And she said spring is for science. And I love that too because by the time like March and April roll around, we just have a really hard time congregating in our schoolroom. We just, like the kids play before school. They they barely make it into the schoolroom. We just want to be outdoors. We just don't want to be in the schoolroom. So I decided that I was going to take those those two different ideas and turn it into something that's unique for our homeschool that really I felt worked well with our family and you might find some value in it and decide to take some of these tips and impl implement them in your own homeschool and that is that we like to front load our school year so that when we get to spring and we know that we're not going to be that focused it's okay because we did the bulk of our learning at the beginning of the school year. I also like to do the our history units in the winter because I feel like that's a time when it just it's nice to just kind of cozy up. I know we're in Southern California, so there's not much cozying up, but the point is is that the days are shorter. It just kind of feels nice just to come together and do a lot of reading. And then in the springtime, then we'll do our science units because we just want to be outdoors and we don't want to be studying anymore. And so in order to make that work with unit lessons or main lesson blocks is that we decide to do like our heavier learning in the fall. So any new learning for math or new learning for grammar or writing, we did that in the fall. It doesn't mean that we don't still do those subjects throughout the whole year because when you're doing a main lesson block, you're still doing a lot of other smaller lessons on a daily basis. It's just that you're spending a lot of time concentrating on one particular subject area. And so we still have math and grammar throughout the whole entire year. But you're probably familiar with the idea that if you're if you're learning something new in math, like it doesn't take so much to learn that new concept. It doesn't take so much to learn addition or subtraction or multiplication, but it does take a long time to make those skills proficient. So while we might introduce a new new area of learning and math at the beginning of the year, we will continue to practice that throughout, throughout the whole entire year. And so this is something that I'll do with our homeschool. First of all, we'll front load the school year. We'll do our reading for our history. Like, well, we do reading every day for pretty much all the subjects, but 
we'll do our history in the winter and we'll do our science in the spring. And something that's happened over the years is that we haven't gotten to all of our science units in the spring because we just don't tend to be as effective in school by the time March rolls around. So we end up rolling over one of those science units to the fall and it tends to be kind of like a nice way to introduce the school year alongside some of the other more head learning of of our grammar and our math. And then we can go into our our other math and grammar main lesson blocks and to be honest we don't have like a I've never really done like a language arts main lesson block I might have done one or two in the past but it's not something that I regularly do I just find that one a little bit easier to do on a daily basis but you still can take a concentrated amount of time and focus on an area of grammar or writing and then you can just practice that on a daily or weekly basis throughout the year all right, so our school year actually resembles our school day. Our school day in the fall tends to start at 8 a.m. By the time spring rolls around, we're starting like at 10 or not at all or 11 or 4 in the afternoon. In the fall, we tend to be a little bit more willing to get up and get started. So we'll start at 8 a.m. And I really prefer doing it, or, I mean, there's no excuse for us the day, it's like easy to start at eight. It's hard in the spring when you spring forward with the time change, that's when it's hard to start at eight. So we'll start early in the fall and we'll do our, the beginning part of the day before lunch, we'll do more of our heavy learning. We front load our day and then we'll break for lunch, and then we'll do our main lesson, which you might think is a little bit upside down. And to be honest, in a Waldorf curriculum, it would be. You would tend, you tend to do your main lesson in the morning when the kids are a little bit more fresh. But what I found was that we had so many other smaller lessons, it was taking too long to do all of those and our main lesson in the morning. So we decided to shift the main lesson to the afternoon, which works really well for a science unit and a history unit because those ones either have a lot of hands-on activities or there's a lot of reading. So by shifting those to the afternoon, we can concentrate on our math and our language arts or our grammar. And we can also do some of the other lessons that I personally want to implement in our homeschool. So once that's out of the way, then we can break for lunch. And in our home, lunch tends to be the main meal over dinner. So I, I will break and go cook lunch while the kids complete some of the assignments that they can do independently. Then we'll have kind of a bigger-ish lunch than, you know, just sandwiches or something light. And then at that point, we, we, and we tend to take a long lunch. Uh, I would say, from the time I leave the schoolroom to the time I come back in, I would say at least two hours, maybe even more. Then we need to reconvene in the schoolroom. And this is always a challenge because nobody wants to do that. So we tend to keep our reading, like whatever book I'm gonna read aloud to the kids, I tend to keep that for after lunch because that's something that they really wanna do. And if I do that earlier in the day, then I don't have like this incentive to make it back to the schoolroom. So then we'll do our, our read aloud book, which currently right now is journey to the center of the earth and and it could be anything it could be a historical fiction it could be a classic it's just something that I'm gonna read aloud that's separate but inspired by our main lesson after we do our read aloud then we can move into our main lesson block and our main lesson block of course has a lot of read reading aloud and all of our lessons do so I will in, I will begin with that and then we can break away and do some of our hands-on projects now that's the ideal situation and then of course once we're done once we leave the schoolroom to do our hands-on project we're not really gonna come back now here are the exceptions I have a ninth grader this year and he is needing to do a lot more work than my other two kids and he's needing to do a lot more work than he had to had to do in the past and so there are times where he needs to come back in and do some of his other work and because he can't work with us uh, in just the main lesson blocks the way I have in the past he needs to do some of his lessons on a daily basis just per requirements of our charter school and high school requirements so sometimes he'll need to come back in and do some of those lessons or he'll be doing some of those lessons in the period of time before lunch 
whereas in the past we wouldn't have been like say doing our history reading before lunch but these are some exceptions that I've had to kind of accommodate now that he is older the other thing is that if I can not lose my train of thought oh yes the other thing is that you have to be prepared for anomalies and they happen every single day you might get a phone call or you might have an appointment or your kids might decide to build a computer from scratch and or they might be paving the street in front of your house and that takes up two hours because that's just really thrilling or your kids work on a project in the schoolroom that you just can't tell them to stop because it's just so creative and and you, you know that's school too so every day I am prepared for just something happening and that means that that means that we we plan but we are totally prepared to make adjustments now if too many of these anomalies happen day after day after day then one of two things has to happen either you have to say okay we're not going to break for those you know for the paving of the street for like the fourth day in a row or you have to say okay the current system I have just doesn't work and I really need to revisit a new system because obviously we're not getting to all of our work or obviously we're just way too distractible so that's that's another thing that I I have my lesson plan but I'm also prepared to make adjustments but here's the thing and I just want to show you my binder picked it up from Target and in the front I have my lesson plans now these are the ones I just printed off these are not the ones that are in my schoolroom currently because I do print off one to keep in my binder and one for the schoolroom in which the kids will then highlight their assignments when they're done so once they've completed an assignment they just highlight it and that way hopefully this is front and back hopefully by the end of the week everything is highlighted not always but you know we plan so we this is this is a, a week at a glance even though it's set up daily that's just the way I've organized it but basically this is something that we want to get through by the end of the week and here's the thing is that I don't want to say concentrate five chapters of reading from our novel on in one day I really want to spread that out over the weeks or over the the, the whole week and so I, I would prefer that we can split this up and, and do it daily. But the point is, is that we want to get this done by the end of the week. And so this is not in any particular order. This is for all three of my kids, although my kindergartner is not really represented in this. But this is for my fifth grader and my ninth grader. It includes all the things that we're going to do either together in our units or independently. And it includes, say, like the chapters that the kids are going to read or the names of the books. And sometimes a book will span the entire week. Right here I've got like some geology books that span the entire week. But they are such easy readers that they could read them all in one day. And then the following day they could do the narration, like the written narration for the whole book. And then they would have three days off of not having to do that. But it's just easier for the sake of my lesson plan just to put it in every day that week. Because eventually it's going to get done. Okay, so I think that about covers how we go about doing our our whole year, how we schedule a whole year and our our whole day. I just want to like reiterate one thing about the main lesson block and our daily proficiency uh, lessons. We have a, there's a lot of things that I want to that I want to cover. There's a lot of interests that I personally have and that the kids have. And so what I found was it's it's of, of tremendous value to do little tiny like Charlotte Mason inspired mini lessons on a daily basis because by the end of the week, by the end of the month, or by the end of the year, you will have accomplished a lot by doing these tiny little baby steps. And these little five minute lessons add up to a lot at the end of the year. And sometimes the kid's concentration level is a little bit better if it's only gonna be for a few minutes. Not to say that there is tremendous value in a longer main lesson unit because that really also expands the children's attention spans and it's also good for them to have have an opportunity to really go in depth with a particular subject area so what we do is that there are some things that I really want to do on a daily basis and poetry was one of them and I'm I don't know very much or anything about poetry and so sometimes our poetry is like the silly 
Shel Silverstein poems. Now I can't remember the title of the books. Oh, um, Where the Sidewalk Ends. So sometimes it's just reading one poem out of that book every day. Sometimes it's just reading one fairy tale out of Grimm's fairy tales every day. And sometimes it's just reading some other little picture books on a daily basis so that I remind myself that my kindergartner, kindergartner needs some some one-on-one -on -one attention as well because she's currently lost in the mix because there's just so much attention given to my fifth grader and my ninth grader right now. To remedy this problem, I've decided that every four to six weeks, I'm going to break from our typical main lessons, or actually from our typical lesson plans altogether. I'll keep my ninth grader doing his daily work because he'll need to, but I will depart from our main lesson and our other daily lessons and do a concentrated kindergarten unit for that whole week. And then we'll go back to our regular lessons and then another month or two later, we'll revisit that again so that at least for that period of time, I can really dedicate my attention to a kindergarten curriculum and to my daughter. Because right now she does a lot of just playing and listening to the stories, but there's nothing really for her in particular. And we picked up such wonderful things in our recent kindergarten haul. I definitely want to incorporate those into our homeschool. All right, so if you have questions about my schedule or how we just arrange our unit studies, please let me know about them in the comment section below. All right, thanks for watching.